right there. Check, 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 check. Perfect. Cool. That was fucking. Can you throw me my water, Doug? I got it. Thanks, man. Oh, I'm having a fucking hard time opening it, dude. Come on, man. Oh. Yeah. Welcome, boys. Oh, frick. To side by side. This is exciting. Side by side with Cletus McFarlane, baby. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The you man. like the wow. air horn, dude? Oh. <laughs> Golly. This is that... slapping right now. <laughs> Nothing but Our the boy, dude. <laughs> For... <laughs> yeah. That's nuts, right? That is nuts. So welcome to Side by Side with Cletus McFarlane. He's got the slippers on. What more do you need, really? No, these are definitely nice slippers I've ever owned. There you go. Well, they're yours now. You guys always take good care of us, so (laughs) should have expected this. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So Uh, anyway, wow, big day here. First podcast ever. Thank you for being the first on the show, Garrett. It makes a world of difference for us, and I really appreciate it. You're dang right, brother. Happy to be here. Huge. Thank you. Happy to be here. So I would say there's an elephant in the room here, and that's Nick Seuss, bud. What the hell is that? Father, dude. The father. (laughs) Dude. We got half and half right now. We got two daddies. Yeah. Pretty nuts. Yeah, two fresh dads. How's it going, man? This guy had twins. Double. (laughs) Double down on us all. I really gave it. I really gave it. And yours are two weeks old. Two weeks today, actually. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. So young. Mine mine turned nine months today. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Nice. Nice. He's born on the 20th? He's born on the 13th. My math is not good. <laughs> <laughs> what is the day today? It's the 13th, so that makes sense. Yeah. What a jump. Yeah, crazy. I saw pictures of that boy. He's got some really great eyes, dude. Just I a beaut. S- uh, thank you. And I saw some photos of your children, and they're beautiful. Thank you. That little burrito wrap you uh, had you going like there. That was tight. <laughs> <Yeah>. Look, <laughs> looks amazing. A swaddle game. It's it's off the charts. Swaddling <laughs> is a fun <laughs> thing. It is super fun. My, my kid didn't like being swaddled that. Once he was able to like kind of push with his arms, it was over. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So swaddling is when you turn a baby into a burrito, correct? Exactly. 100%. The okay. tighter the burrito, the better they sleep. That I'll makes a lot of sense. And like when you're first a dad, like you look like the employee that just started at Chipotle and oh, like okay. the tortilla, like, <laughs> you know, is all sure. jacked up. And then by the end of your swaddle game, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like to be swaddled now. So oh, yeah. if you want to come We can line that I up. Got you, dude. Get this me drug along. would yeah, probably work. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense, man. Swaddling babies, that's a big thing. But yeah. uh, before we get too deep in anything, Garrett, who are you, man? What uh, what makes you you? I'm Cleese McFarland, professional redneck. Oh, wow. Okay. What more do you need? Is know? that your elevator speech? Is that what you would say normally? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just a guy who likes to drive anything with uh, anything that drives itself, not into pedal bikes or anything like that, really? you know, okay. where it takes manual labor. I mean, it's <laughs> something with a, a steering wheel. And or, you know, some sort of cyclic stick, whatever. As long as I can control said vehicle, I'm into it. Engines. Okay. Engines yeah. are Pretty fun. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes a lot of sense because you just went out and did a lap on our track. We're going to talk about that later, but I would say yeah, it looked like a pretty spicy lap. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it looked really good. What would you guys think about it? I thought it? you were going to say, like, the way you were talking earlier, I thought it was probably just trash. I mean, spicy no. can mean trash, too. I'm not good at driving off-road. Okay. More of an asphalt guy. Okay. Okay. A lot of drifting stuff too going on right now with you. Oh yeah. The yeah, damn track. asphalt. Yeah. I stick to asphalt. That makes special a lot occasion of sense. for you boys. Hey, you well, look, I appreciate you it. You looked at home good. out there. I yeah, think the bar good. is going to be set pretty high. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah. It looked good. It looked good. good. So crazy. yeah, man. I'll get to my details. Here. <laughs> should we? Should it takes a second to load up the phone, you know, because yeah, face ID. I have details. Let's hear it. Face ID. Okay. How dare you? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? What did I do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. First off, I'm a big fan of you, dude. I love you. Yeah. You're a good American. I love you guys, too. That's why we're here. You've really set the bar for, I think, everyone, personally. Uh, well, that's very nice of you to say. I feel saying. like I... Uh, I feel like people are setting the bar higher and higher, and I'm just trying to keep up. I don't know if that's true. I, I dude, I've crunched the numbers, and <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, bud. What I want to know, okay? So, yeah. When you first started, what was your plan? Like, what was like, what were you planning to do with your channel? You know, luckily for me, I had a job, the good job. So I was actually pretty much making mine solely for the fun of filming videos, editing them. 
and posting them. I was more so the process of it all and just trying to get that like entertainment factor out. Because when I was younger, I wanted to be like a Jay Leno, like talk show, but you know, just like entertainment, like yeah. fun. I was kind of a class clown. So for me, it was just the process. Like I liked filming it, definitely mm -hmm. liked editing it, making the thumbnail title, because that was kind of what my job was at 1320 Video. And mm -hmm. then getting it out there was just, I don't know, just the process. And then luckily, as I got traction, it was able to be monetized. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Were you like me and you took a bunch of videos as a kid but didn't do anything with them? Like, did you take, like, the family uh, handy cam and, like, take videos of you jumping yeah. your bike and stuff? Yeah, but most of mine are on YouTube. Really? Is yeah. there a different yeah. channel that we don't know about? <laughs> Dude, they're straight up on this channel, on my main channel. Why? Have we not gone back and I looked at the deeper. oldest? I think I put some of them unlisted because... There was a lot of like uh, just kind of weird stuff going on on them, like people commenting because like, but <laughs> there sense. are straight yeah. up. There's there's several videos from 2009 on my channel. I think maybe yeah, 2009, 2010, just ripping my RC uh, boat and my RC plane. Really, one okay. of them had 45,000 views. That's back a hitter. Like, back in like 2013, that's what she basically wow. leveled out at. Wow, that's solid, man. killing that's it. Super back, funny. Man. Yeah, killing that's super yeah. funny. And then I, I took about a, a five-year hiatus. Okay, came okay, back. came back as Cletus McFarlane. What's interesting yeah. about that is we just <laughs> met Tom Bailey and hung out with him for the first time yesterday. Yep. And Tom Bailey is what actually kicked off you as a character. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it wasn't for Tom Bailey and several other things, it's like. Cleese McFarland wouldn't exist. I mean, his car just so happened to be parked in a parking lot, and and that's where the first ever viral Cleese McFarland video came from. First ever Cleese McFarland video. Yeah, so. that makes sense. I, I remember watching that back. So I used to watch 1320 way back when you had to download the videos. And yeah. It was like the parish truck, like yes. twin turbo truck doing all that stuff. The DVDs. And all yeah. That. And I remember when they had a YouTube channel, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to watch this. And then I came across you doing that. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? What does he, <laughs> what does he think he's doing? Yeah. And then what was that? Like eight years ago? Something like that? I think we're coming up on eight years. That's freaking wild. I know. Dude. I know. It's That's crazy. A long ways to go in eight years. Yeah. Seriously. Super it's impressive. Incredible. Hey, thanks, yeah. guys. It's been insane. But we've also been fully down on the throttle since we got going so the guys and i have just freaking pressed forward as hard as we can to be where we are today so yeah I, super evident looking at everything that you're doing that it is full blast i appreciate that and it's crazy that we get to like share just all this growth with uh with all our friends like coming here today i'm like i remember when i first met you guys i don't even yep. think we went you would do, you didn't even have a shop. It was just Doug's it's garage. Just my dad's yep. garage. So like yep. you guys picked me up at the airport and we're like, let's go riding. <laughs> there was nowhere else to go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like off we went. We just went to ride and like now I walk in today, three giant buildings, fourteen yep. acres, full blown racetrack. It's and that was serious. like three years ago. Yeah, I think things for us have stepped up too. That's and nuts. there's That's definitely amazing. like you and your fan base to to blame for that has brought us to where we're at. Well, can't say thank you enough for that seriously hey, i mean i think we're we were just there for an assist you guys definitely did your thing to get here so thanks man. but makes a lot of sense. glad to be a part of it which is it's also funny to think back that we just like literally met over youtube yeah i remember when you commented like <laughs> i think i don't know if these guys even like people aren't weren't really super deep in automotive youtube channel like i know nick likes cars doug's more of like a truck off-road kind of guy but when you commented i'm like holy shit dude and i think like, he, things are picking up here i remember we were on a trip we were headed north on 75 yeah and i think you messaged us on instagram and i look at my phone and i'm like Leo, I got this message from Garrett 1320 video. <laughs> and Leo's just like, dude, that's him. And we were freaking out. Well, yeah, I crazy. commented, I remember commenting yep. and saying, like, hey, let's go ride and check your Instagram DMs. Like, yep. That's what it said. And then I just went straight to Instagram and was like, yo, guys, let's go rip sometime. Yeah, that was badass. That was back when that we was, were doing the gauntlet laps, yeah, too. The gauntlet was yep. so <laughs> Dude, though, and then I, without ever even meeting you guys, <clears throat> we got on the phone, and I was like, "Hey, man, like I'm looking to buy an X3. You're like, I got a guy. We'll trick it out. Yep. Just 
wrote the check, which was a, <laughs> like I was really excited because I never, yeah. I never really had a good, a, a good machine. I always had like these used ones. I was like, I'm finally gonna buy one new. JH is like, why are you sending it to these guys? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he's like, and he's like, dude, he's like, have you like met them? I'm like, no, but they seem really cool. I've watched a bunch of their videos. So I just like ship you guys the machine. You like send me a picture of the day you picked it up, and that yep. was it. And then I just like flew up, and now I've been <laughs> really good friends ever since. Yeah, that was awesome. I felt like uh, so we actually invited James on that trip too, but James got sick right before. Yeah, he had to bail. Yeah, and that would have been a whole different vibe for the trip. I feel like the just five people that were there, five, six people, like really changed everything because it made us become like, oh, hey, yeah. we're all in this together. Yeah, and uh, thank you guys for not stealing that X3. Like, because I didn't no have problem. any way to track you down. Yeah, no problem, man. <laughs> Dude, our pleasure. <laughs> hey, we got it. We got Actually, it back in the long second. run. Yeah. We got it back. You guys did steal it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's well, a different frame now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I got to talk about the fact, too, on that trip that Nick Seuss hit a lot of curbs that day. And I was yeah. I was definitely up. wondering. I'm like, <laughs> they picked me up from the airport. We meet yep. for briefly mm. minutes, 100 seconds. Yeah. Like, the, yep. like the Delta yeah, arrivals We're in the section. Delta arrivals, which, by the way, they got me a first-class ticket. Yeah, we weren't playing around. That was balling, <laughs> That dude. was big shooter. I'm like, these yeah. guys are crazy. We didn't flown first class before. Yeah, yeah. I've not flown first class. I didn't fly first, first class, class either. So I get out, I get in. They're like, you're riding with Seuss. I was like, all right. I jump in, dude. It's not even a minute he hits a curb with the trailer. <laughs> no way. percent <laughs> So then I'm like, I'm, get, I'm like, bro, you need me to drive? And he's like, no. And like instantly you and I hit it off. Yeah. But then funny. approximately 45 minutes later, we pull into this gas station and we hit every single curb in the yeah, gas station. Dude. That makes sense. The trailer's up on the friggin' side of the road. Dude, it was so funny. I backed it up right onto the sidewalk. Oh, yeah, I backed weird. it up. I, we're like, boom, boom. You know, the, <laughs> the truck is not only on the curb, the trailer's on the curb. That was the only cool truck we could like get. We yeah. can't pick these guys up and jump. We got to be the raptor. So we're in an so overloaded raptor. Put a 34 foot every trailer. curb we can find. <laughs> Three machines to it. But I was like, this is great. Yeah, it was a good time. Ripped, yeah. It was probably a good thing you didn't ride any other truck. So we had this truck called the Blue Ox. That oh, yeah. When we bought it, it smelled like cow manure. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. And then it, truck, for yeah. like, yeah, the year we had it, it smelled like manure. And right before we sold it, I just changed a cabin filter. Smell was totally gone. Nice. So <laughs> simple fix. Right? Yeah. I love making my cars the best uh, version of themselves before I sell them. That always seems to happen. <laughs> never fails. It I never don't know why. Yeah. Finally, do all those things you want to do, then get rid of it. Yep. <laughs> never fails. Saving it for the next to, guy. To boost the value by 5%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, such is life, though. Yeah, the first time we met in road, I think we really understood the level of crazy that you were at because you, you went out, you took this brand-new XMR on, like, the nasty tires it comes with. You're hitting the mud holes. Do you remember when you skimmed the water and splashed that dude and it, like, <laughs> yeah, a chunk what? of mud hit him in the hair? That was so – that clip was so funny. Yeah, that was the dude, intro to the video. That was nuts. That was so funny. Do you remember the time when uh, Cooper got stuck in Florida and I had to pull him out? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was brutal. <laughs> I th- that I've was never so seen a man hard. so yeah. covered in mud. That was so hard to capture. Like I'm wearing a GoPro on my head, and Cooper's stuck in his talon, and you get in front of him in the XMR with the nasty tires, just literally wide open for, through this mud patch for, for a, a long time. time. Yeah, you, you did that thing where it's like he's definitely out, but you don't want him to get stuck again, so you just stay well, we in had gotten go stuck on. several times. Yeah. that day. That was that was when Doug got banned, dude. Was that was the that? same day? Oh, I don't think freak, it was that dude, day. Maybe that it was. Was. Doug, was it? Doug got banned from that riding place. I don't think yeah. we should say the name. <laughs> <laughs> Bliver Blanche, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, def- that's not it. It's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah. that was unfortunate. To, you know, to my defense, like I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. <laughs> Ignorance is a good excuse, right? Every same, time. dude. Yeah. I didn't even know. Yeah. Right. It was written in the bylaws. They really took that <laughs> really took that seriously though. JH basically had to go to court for me. Nah, dude, understand. here's the deal with that story. Let me let me just give a quick expo. <laughs> Doug rode in a forbidden canal. Yeah. Technically we all rode and said forbidden canal. Doug got caught because he did that thing where he slammed on his brakes and then sunk. Really cool video, but it ended up yep. getting him in trouble. 
Doug was on JH's guest list, so they found out Doug's name, found out JH. They called JH into like the county, like the meeting. Yeah. And JH, for whatever reason, like gets my name involved. <laughs> oh, and no. so I go there. So he's like, You have to come to the meeting. I go there, dude. They have no idea who I am. This is completely irrelevant to my life. But I J. didn't know this part. But <laughs> JH dragged me to the meeting as if I had to be there. So here we are standing in a meeting. There's eight guys with beards wearing camouflage jackets. Yikes. And they're like, what are we going to do about this Doug Butterfield situation? <laughs> are you serious? And they're like, and your name's Justin Hildebrand. And, and they're like, and what's your name? And I'm like, you guys don't know my name? And, and uh, they so they, they had no idea who I was or why I was even there. <laughs> so JH just, like, wasted my whole day just because he's a jerk. Oh, I didn't hear I this feel, part yeah, of the story. I feel dude. even worse yeah. now. Yeah. I feel even worse now. So then I'm like, well, you know, I'm just uh, his buddy. <laughs> Observing. I'm just hanging out. And so I watched the whole meeting. And then they gave JH, like, what? Uh, they took his guest passes away for a year. But now we're back on good terms. Okay. So Do you have a deed there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, we're we're good. Now S we follow the rules. You know, serious we, business. I had to reread the rules after that. I didn't. I don't think I even knew that they took his guest passes away. No, I think that's the first time I've heard. Yeah, that. but we don't really like taking guests, anyways, because um, because of what Doug did. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ruin that for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was pretty uh, wild. Going down to Florida and riding is a whole different situation, too. Yes. Like, up here in Michigan, we just have trails. We have a small set of dunes, and everything's fine. But down in Florida, there that doesn't exist. You're either on a track, like the Sandlot, yeah. or you're hitting up an old, basically, mobile home park with no mobile homes <laughs> yep. uh, that's filled with sand and mud. Yeah. Which, admittedly, is a great time. Super yeah. fun. I actually we've we've recently found some really good spots. So okay. next time you guys come down, we need to bring back the Florida ride. All right, I'm in, dude. All right, all right, all right. Nick Suze, when are you going to be able to come back and do stuff? He's he's got a while. Hey, a couple months, three months. Okay, nailed it. That's not too bad. You know, Does that mean uh, come uh, yeah, November we're going to go riding in Florida again? Maybe. Do you we'll think see. you're going to race Bristol with? Uh, the little ninas i want here's the thing i want to yeah but doug could always or leo or someone could always take your spot yeah, yeah but i so suck though you don't know that yeah. i guarantee i suck compared you to you that, dude. i'm well. gonna get shook out in the track dude you know what's gonna happen i'm gonna see kevin like uh Oh boy! Just I knew we just were gonna kidding. go there eventually i knew it dude, we had to bring you mean, Bristol. you're gonna see yeah. kevin kevin's gonna see you Oh boy! What do you mean, passing him? Yeah, yeah you don't right. know exactly where you're at the whole race. Oh, you're really trying to fire it up now. <laughs> and when he passes you, he'll probably take you out. Well, last uh, time I passed him, he just got in front of me and I spun him out, and then I got back to the pack. Yeah, that was the last time I raced with Kevin. Yeah, well, don't forget, dude. I think certainly there's some things that have happened between then and now, and he's probably ready to take you out. You think so? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know wild. about this. It's gonna be wild. To take you out, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are probably wondering where the Kevin and uh, Side by Side blog beef lies. Right. I now. mean, listen, I started the beef, so uh, I literally the next day told Kevin, like after I put this video out, it was actually the same day. Yeah. And I said, hey, let's put this video out. You're probably not going to like it. And he watched it, and we, you know, had a back and forth, and it was literally done that day. And then yeah. the internet like just took it and went ham. <laughs> Perpetuates <laughs> everything. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely yeah. I think the beef is at rest, but it is still hilarious. I mean, it's it darn bringing funny. It back up in their recent videos on it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what he keeps it's talking about. Crazy. I think it's so funny. I always uh, think about Leo editing that video like, this is going to show him. <laughs> dude, I was pissed, dude. I was mad. Uh, it was a big thing. Yeah, when I had to thing. watch my boy friggin' body go limp when he hit the wall and the Type that, S camera <laughs> broke, like, as he hit, man. Uh, so it's just in the I know, he went down. I'm I'm, tired, that dude. was a crazy crash. Oh, yeah, my chest still hurts every day. Have you... Really? Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> Every day? Right here. It's like, I need to crack it, but I can't. Oh, I don't Just like hit the that. wall in Bristol, dude. Thanks a lot, Garrett. I, <laughs> I don't like kidding. to hear that. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. I mean, here's the deal. You're racing. Oh, yeah, well, here's <laughs> the deal. Territory, yeah. We also have way more safety equipment now. So, yeah, not only the cages, did you know that we put Kirkies in all the cars? Thank really? The Lord, thank the Full Lord. containment seats. That's awesome. Wait, so, containment excellent. seats? Full Kirky containment seats. 
like the straight up ones that are in mullet. Are we shouting out Kirky on that? Um, I think they hooked it up a little bit. Hey, dude. Good we company. definitely spent some good money, but uh, we were like, dude, we got to get these seats. So we, we got it, uh, definitely a good deal. Between like Race Quip, Summit Racing, Kirky, and uh, Cage Kits, we've stepped it up big time. I mean, time. the cars are not awesome. like, dude, yeah. in Indy, like I was blown away by the level of like safety. Yeah. It's, a, it's no longer a Crown Vic. It's a Crown Vic shell with it a is. race car inside yeah and now cool. now with the kirkies they're just so comfortable That's you can cool. just rest your head on the seat really? while you're That's doing awesome. your four thousandth left turn which <laughs> is nice yeah i don't think you can make it to that race nick i, I suddenly <laughs> realize i'm interested <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the kids dude it's part of the little ninos the ninos dude you do need some bristol redemption i know dude that was so fun i, I mean i say this about every race i feel like i was gonna win but you I do know, get dude. so close. I like that so one. many I was, times. <sighs> like, <sighs> I got up to the front quick, and I'm like, dude, are these people all sandbagging me, or what's the deal? <laughs> yeah, you and were then boom into so the wall, quick. dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I literally, like, you were literally leading, right? Yeah. They're like, you're right there with yeah, Haley. Yeah, me and Haley were going side by side. Damn. But man, that was uh, that track, dude. It forces you to haul Rip. ass dude it fast. forces you to haul fast the beans <laughs> put it in the pajamas you really don't have dude. to lift you don't no, feel like it no Shh. wait did you really not lift you don't have to no how are you serious your tires won't make it 80 laps but you can probably go if you do the first 40 like with a little bit of letting off you can do the last 40 full throttle because you did wow. that time we went down there and practiced didn't you do like 90 something 90 i thought it was like 90 something laps before it blew i think i did 90 and i did like the last 40 full throttle really mm -hmm. it's crazy. okay and the crown vic did not overheat i mean that's just no they're stout dude the suckers are stout. what vehicle can be under full throttle for 30 minutes especially on a racetrack they under load, the dude. Best. <laughs> that's serious the best it's unreal so we got Doug racing that race as well, which is going to be tight. I feel yeah. like really mm -hmm. appreciate the double entries on that one. Oh yeah, yeah. We got to uh, take the W on one of these, we man. We come one close. Of these suckers, man. Just keep we throwing enough darts. <laughs> we'll get one we'll eventually. Get a bullseye. Come that, on, boys. The last one at your, the last one at the Freedom Factory. Oh yeah, you finished so right behind much, me. That was so much. Fun. That was Just fun, and you and I raced clean, which yeah. I was happy about. Because I think so at one fun. point you were ahead of me, and then we kind of yeah. Yeah, I think it was the last or second to last lap. He passed you on the inside, then shot turn two Overshot. too hard. And oh, came yeah. Under. No, I saw there. you pulling the Forza <laughs> 3000 on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy's got so much speed. I'm like, <laughs> I was going like, to uh, go straight and let him go by. That was funny. That's that exactly what funny. happened, that, too. That, did you not feel like you're like forming the one driver in that oh, moment though dude, dude. i'm like <laughs> screw he goes flying by i'm like yeah, back down inside it was i was crazy like, by the uh, end i was so in the zone i'm like this is I, I, this is it i'm gonna win i just gotta pass this guy i got this dude and turns then, out uh, the, the the guy owns the track yeah. dude you ain't passing <laughs> it's pretty it pretty good were, pretty were, good your car is definitely slight like you i think could probably put like half a tenth on me a lap so every time i get a break on you I could just slowly see you getting closer, and I was like, damn it. <laughs> that was a good race, dude. That, I was on the edge of my seat for so long. That was the first yeah. race I had an Apple Watch, and my heart rate was like 160 to 180. <laughs> no, sustained. Was dude, seriously, yeah. sustained. We That's were losing. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we were losing our minds big time. But, yeah, I feel like out of the people that have raced your races as many times as we have, like we've done pretty darn good for just being a bunch of fat losers from Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think you guys have ever really ruined cars, which is nice. I mean, you got in that accident, but that yeah. wasn't your fault. And... Usually your guys' cars don't require a ton of maintenance, which is nice. Good. Well, I like that. I like to listen to what you say during the meetings and you say, this is your car for the rest of the yeah. year. <laughs> I, I keep that in mind. Typically, uh, your guys are pretty low maintenance, on, you know, compared to Parker Mitchell. Some others. <laughs> Bro. Uh, you know. Brent, Brent goes hard, dude. Okay, no, Brent bro, does go Brent's hard. car will come out with a dent on every quarter panel. <laughs> <laughs> There's been times where I've been passed by Brent where I didn't realize you could go that fast on the track as <laughs> dude, I'm fast. Like, how <laughs> is he built this much speed? Yeah. <laughs> and then Kevin's car gets destroyed because everybody hits him. <laughs> he just, I don't know. I think he's just built a reputation for being he'll he will potentially win so everyone just like hits him whenever they get a good chance i mean i respect kevin's driving Maybe skills that dude is yeah, the, the best probably on the track especially yeah. after yeah. Your, your crazy 24-hour lap deal like was that actual good practice for uh, getting out there yeah or no? yeah 
Okay. Yeah. Like, were you zoning out at times, or was it like you were focusing um, through every single <clears throat> lap? The first two hours, we were definitely all chasing the lap times, and then once like 3 a.m. hit, it was miserable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Horrible. Yeah. In fact, one of my least favorite things. I was like, bro, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> this was a terrible this idea. This sucks. And the video didn't do like three million either. So, man. Nah, dude, did not hit. <laughs> Quite the effort, bro. Yeah, you know, whatever. That's okay. You win some, At the you end lose of the day, some, right? you have more laps than any other human being on that track, I think, now. I got to be up there. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's I did pretty like, awesome. Yeah. Kevin and I each did like, I don't know. 1500 each or something, and then that's George and Zach filled in the rest, maybe like 1200 each. That's a lot. What? That's not that yeah. many. Yeah. Well, dude. we did, dude, we did 3800 in 20 yeah. hours. <laughs> no, that makes okay. Yeah. So, what you sub 20 every lap, or you just right at 20? Right at 21 and a half. Oh, so you're not pushing it, pushing it. Uh, no. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. No, I think the fastest lap time I said was like a 19. Five. Okay. Yeah, that's got to be close to track record for Crown Vicks. Do you know those numbers off the top of your head? Uh, I've seen it. We've seen, uh, I think, like a 19-2 from Alex Bowman. Oh, that was early oh, on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is the track faster now with that corner fix? It is faster. Interesting. Okay. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, seriously. Are you doing yeah, the bean it again? Wasn't, it wasn't fixed at the Freedom 500, was it? No. No. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, we're doing the bean for the lay mullets. The bean is my that's favorite. The best. It's yeah. the yeah. best. It is. It just... It's you so guys should get fun. some Rangers for Danger Ranger. I've that is you. lit. That Danger video, Ranger bro. Danger seems like it's well, dangerous dirt is one, accurate. Dirt one's done. <laughs> the asphalt one of the Freedom sense. Factory is a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Think about it. As long as Uncle Chet doesn't come in and get like a 2019 or something, dude. <laughs> no, that's what the cool, hell? dude. I mean, I'm all about the new trucks. I think it's fun. Yeah. Good thing he's not a super good driver because if you could pair up a good truck with a good driver like that, <laughs> shoof. <laughs> Nah, dude, it's these guys in these old Rangers. Yeah. You know, watch out for They slap, dude. Yeah. 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 What? Like, like, what? When did you, like, I guess I was thinking about this the other day. Like, when did you decide that you wanted to do live events? Or, like, what made you? The pay per view? No, like, the like Cletus and Cars. Oh, well, <clears throat> I thought I worked for Streetcar Takeover. Uh huh. Right. So I kind of knew their formula. This many people, you know out of the track can earn you a pretty decent bit of money and i was looking for other ways to monetize the fact that people already wanted to see leroy run so i hit up the drag strip owner at the time mr allen yeah uh-huh. allen and uh i was like what do you think about doing an event and he's like well i've always wanted to do that and i was like i want to do a burnout contest and uh he was in on that and then he was like i want to do this thing called demolition drag racing and I was like, perfect, let's do it. Wait, wait, hold on. That was uh, Alan's that was idea? Alan's Alan idea. came up with Demolition Drag Racing. Because wow. that is so savage is on so the track. Fun to watch. Yeah. So rough. Yeah. I, everyone was like, you're going to ruin the drag strip. And I'm like, well, the owner came up with it. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I crazy. I yeah. always wondered how you talk people into that. Turns out. And the first it. event, also the first day I ever met JH. Really? Yeah. I didn't meet him, but he did a burnout on top of a PT Cruiser in his mud truck, almost flipped it. That's the guy you want, and that then later sense. did flip later it. Later did flip it. Wow, at my makes house. Sense. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So okay, let's let's run the timeline here. When was your first like actual in person event? Was it sixteen or seventeen? It was April twenty second, two thousand seventeen. I asked you that for a reason because I know you have like PTSD about <laughs> the event. I don't have PTSD, but I know the date because I said it 6,000 times in my videos because I wanted it to be big. <laughs> Do you still have 6,000 shirts left over? <laughs> Brother, I may have shirts from that event. I would, dude. We got to find one next would, time we're over. I would love to dude, have I one of those. Dude, I probably do. That would be so sick. Unless they got put into mystery bundles. There was a couple boxes hanging around for years. Wow. Uh, We've done that before. We still have I, stuff from 2018 yeah, as well. Yeah, because I put the yeah. dates on it. That's a bad call. <laughs> Amateur maneuver, you learn, dude. Yeah, you learn the hard way with the dates. You never did yeah. a shirt. It happens. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So live events. What else you got going on right now, man? The track is kind of gotten some hot water over the past year, like with uh, the stuff going on around Manatee County and yeah. the, the speech that you did during the, the court hearing or whatever you want to call that. Yeah, dude, like, that meant nothing. I, I, I straight up started crying 
when you mentioned I want to give this son to my track or this track to my son yeah. one day. Like I mean, I do. It hard. Yeah. I think about it a lot that I so that track when I bought it was for whatever reason not very valuable. And now that land is like the most valuable land avail like potentially available to these people. Yep. In um in Manatee County or probably Sarasota County. So people are hitting us up. Be it's a double edged sword, right? <clears throat> you can look at it the way of this is gonna be the ending of the track. Mm -hmm. And you can also look at it the way of my land value is ten Xing. So good for you. Right? So I'm like well, yeah, I mean, there's, that's the one way to look at it. But also for me, it's like I'd rather there be a track than me have a bunch of money in my bank account. Yeah, because like there's going to have to be another track anyway. Yeah, and I are, I already have said that I would never sell my facility until my other facility is done. Sure. Like that's that's my rule yeah. is I don't want there to be a gap because I feel like I could definitely get taken advantage of. Now that I know how right. the county works, like – I can totally 100% see him. Oh, yeah, this project's approved. We get fired, you know, like a, a young, dumb me, if I had, you know, an approved plot for the new track. And they said, yeah, take the deal on the other one, you know, the current one, yep. build a new one. I can see him now being, ah, never mind. Yeah, right. right. Change yeah. your mind. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm just not doing it, you know. <clears throat> So Smart. it's always been kind of confusing to us to wrap our heads around exactly how it works in where you're at. So there's Lakewood Ranch yeah, and there's Manatee County. How does that all work together? So, how can they just do what they're doing? Yeah, so Lakewood Ranch is like the developer, the development. What does that even mean? That doesn't Because we don't have that That's around the here. company? Yeah, or? no, no, no. Well, it's a corporation that basically came into this county – this area and said we're gonna build we're gonna develop this entire area into a really modern like just awesome place to live so they built golf courses and beautiful homes and shopping centers you know it's re it's a really well functioning area and then in, it became the number one place in the united states to live like if you google it wow number one growing community in the united states like lakewood ranch so they owned okay. the land prior so they bought all the land and then okay. developed it and so what they do is they buy a bunch of land and they sell it to developers with their plan sure so i think okay. that's the best way to put it i don't know if, if what i'm saying is 100 percent accurate but they just so happen to buy the farmer behind the tracks land which is the equivalent of thousands of acres so this farmer sure. became a celebrity <laughs> overnight. He's rich now. Yeah, he made it come up. Yeah. He definitely made a lot of money. And now all of the now the racetrack's surrounded by what will be homes. Okay. So, wow. That's pretty wild to that you can do that as yeah. a developer. So and you know, they would never obviously approve if I said, Hey, uh, is it cool if I build a racetrack next to the current Lakewood Ranch? I mean, they'd be like, Hell no, we're not letting not you build a racetrack. Chance, right? Yeah. But it's cool that we build 5,000 homes next to your race, Jack. Like, 100% right. it's going to be a problem. Anyway, where it's at now is <clears throat> they approved the project contingent upon language that our attorneys made that goes into the deed that says something to the words of, when I purchase this home, I understand there is an adjacent racetrack that can make unlimited noise. Okay. By purchasing this home, I cannot take suit against Freedom Factory LLC, Bradenton Motorsports Park, or its officers sure. in any way, shape, or form. That's all great. What's probably going to happen is... In ten year, five, ten years, Betsy's gonna be pissed off on Sunday morning because we just started. We just got top fuel cars from Bradenton. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my cars are loud, but like now we're like we're talking, we're running top fuel cars. Like we have the two two of the busiest tracks in the country, and now Betsy's gonna be pissed on Sunday when the top fuel guys are 
throwing throttle wax right. and making runs. Spilling her coffee. It's literally yeah. going to rattle their windows. Like It's so It's going to be like Jurassic Park, dude. Yeah. So they slapped a big old Band-Aid on it to do this race village, which is cool. I definitely dig that a little bit. But they're not really talking about the fact that they're putting a school right next to it and all this other stuff. So they're trying to... Wow. Some stuff positive, some stuff pretty negative. But listen, I'm ready, brother. When that time comes, like, fire me up. Let's let's go to court. Yeah, because yeah, you, you have to fight for what you had because yeah, you, you came there before that place blew up. I think we it'll we be talk great. about that every time we come I, down. I think it'll be great that we... Um, that they try and stop us. Yeah. I'm looking forward to them trying to stop us running the tracks because I just do not care to sell it. Like there's not an amount of money that's going to make, that's just going to be like take it and walk. Right. For me, I, I'm just like, whatever, dude. Like I just want to own my track and just enjoy it. Yep. Maybe if I was, you know, hard cornered or something and needed the money, but. I think we're my team's a little smarter than that, so hopefully we don't get ourselves in that position. But for now, brother, bring it on. I know? mean, yeah, that, I like that. That Rally could happen. Troops. Let's go. What the corner situation could happen though, if you were a standard track owner, <clears throat> you know, if you didn't One, have oh yeah diversification like no. you do. Yeah, and I, I'll never blame a track owner for for blaming or for selling their their business. It is one of the. I'm not going to say the worst businesses to be in, but it's like definitely not a business you want to go into. Yeah, it's tough. I would never advise somebody to buy a racetrack. Yeah. I love mine, but dude, it's a grind. And if you didn't have like a really, like a lot of momentum or a good following, brother, good luck. That's a job. And then if some guy comes along and says, hey, Here's enough money so you're set for life, and you don't have to run your racetrack anymore. Right. It's like, see you later, dude. Yeah, why not? Sweet. Yeah. It, it same as the farmer. You know, the farmer, the dude out there busting his butt. He's got hundreds of employees. Hey, how about you? Don't have to worry about any of that. Here's whatever, ten, twenty million dollars. Right. How can he not take that? Yeah, you'd be gone in a second. So, yeah. so I don't blame people. Is the Freedom Factory now self-sustaining? The Freedom Factory is, yeah, it's been self-sustaining for pretty much since the pay-per-views started that, well, no, not necessarily because we spent so much money to renovate. Ever since Mm -hmm. the bleachers and the burnout pad got done, like that year I spent a ton of money. And then when the track manager Josh came on, that's kind of when things started to come together on – it making its own money but it's kind of also the scapegoat of our businesses in a in a way that like if we need a nice trailer or crown vix freedom factory bank account just gets slapped oh, like, yeah. okay. like when we buy 30 crown vix it's on the freedom factory yeah right yeah so right. she kind of gets smoked and then like the the other business the merch business all the Freedom Factory t-shirts that get sold, like that goes into there and then right into the cars and right back into the track, but like all through separate avenues. So like the Freedom Factory is sure. self-sustaining, but it's not like it looks like it makes a lot of money because it's always getting nailed by like just crazy stuff. Yeah, the stuff you're putting on yeah. isn't isn't free or cheap. Right. And yeah, how did, renting equipment, transporting crown bags, everything. How does that look like when a <clears throat> summit comes in? Because I think, you know, we've been a part of every race since the beginning of the Freedom Factory. And when Summit came in to sponsor, it's kind of when things really stepped up. Oh, like, yeah. What does well, that look like? How do they approach you? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, like Summit, for example, we've, we've always bought our stuff from Summit. We still buy almost 90% of our car parts from Summit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For our our race cars even. I mean, it's like, yeah, you got to go buy your turbo from Precision or your engine from an engine builder, but like everything else comes from Summit. So we already kind of uh, use them a lot. And then I just reached out through a couple avenues and through some friends and some guys we were working with at the time at the old pay-per-view company. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, the relationship just began, and that helps a ton because then it's like we don't have to put out so much of our own money and then not know if the pay per view is going to hit, right? And right. pay it back. So yeah, you're kind of dependent on that next that hit. Of really, yeah, that really takes a little bit of risk out of it to have a good sponsor like Summit. 
Yeah, that's like, awesome. And then like the Bristol race, we have Pennzoil by AutoZone, which is huge. Yeah, that's, yeah, pretty that's cool. excellent. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's super, super cool. cool. The new Pennzoil stuff, that the natural gas based stuff. Yeah, like that's badass oil. Turns yeah, out that's what we're running in yeah. all the Vicks now. So they'll actually get oil changes. Really? Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay, Typically, okay. no oil changes. <laughs> Top them off. <laughs> Top them off. So, so they're getting fresh oil. So you talked about okay, being a track owner not being easy. Obviously, diversifying your business and allowing other income streams to supplement that makes it a good thing. Yeah. But when it comes down to you know, maybe something that you call a mistake uh, throughout your career as Cletus. What do you think your your biggest wrong turn or maybe biggest decision that turned out bad was? What's your biggest regret? Mm. Not hanging out with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other than that. Yeah. Please. That one comment on your guys' Other thing. That, yeah. <laughs> I would say some of my bigger mistakes. Well, the Motion Raceworks thing was was – amazing but when we did the deal we got all fired up and i put like big cletus logos on some parts and then i realized that like car guys really don't want a giant cletus logo on their car parts oh interesting so those didn't really like the company is doing fantastic but like that specific line of parts didn't crush it like i thought it would it hmm. did okay i think, but I, it was I like, think we bought some of those dude for, for yeah, the but you guys are my boys dude. Surprised, so like, but yeah right <laughs> but it was like for we we changed it so now it's got like a nice little clean Cletus logo. We came out with these valve covers that had like a giant Cletus those. logo in the I middle. I think that's what we uh, bought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you guys are my boys. But like for other people, they're like, you know, that's cool. But like, you know, maybe it's, so. if you're buying Motion Raceworks, you're a fan of clean parts. Yeah, that's a good look, clean so anodized not, billet, and it's just got right. this massive logo. So like, I think that was a definitely a mistake. But you know, we if. If we even did end up re-anodizing some parts, it was no big deal. So, well, if that's um, your biggest mistake, that's not that big of a deal. I think you're doing fine. I mean, I'm trying to think of other mistakes. I mean, there's been a lot. <laughs> there's definitely been a lot. There has to be, right? I mean, like missed opportunities, maybe would be another way to put that. Yeah, there's been some missed opportunities. You know, I learned. I've learned a lot. You know, just like having employees, you make mistakes on the way you handle a situation or say the the privileges you gave to somebody that you shouldn't have you know just things like that yeah that, wild idea there yeah, yeah yeah i mean like i i've had some young guys that we hired just to move cars around and help out and they just i mean a couple months ago wrecked two crown vicks into each other totaled both of them and it's like, luckily, okay. both of them didn't get hurt. Nothing came of it. No big deal. Nice kids, you know, let them go. But should I give the? Should I have given those privileges on? You know, without supervision, probably right, not. Right. Yeah. yeah probably right. Not, Makes so. you second guess the decision you might have made prior that yeah. led to that as well. Yeah. So I don't know, but big mistakes. Right now, I can't think of a huge one off the top of my head. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot. Honestly. That's, that's good. That's right. good. Right. That's good. And I, I guess that sort of leads into the opposite, the flip side of that of that question. Uh, what do you think is the biggest thing that took you to where you are now? Mm, the number one thing. That's a tough one. In this yeah. part of the show, sponsored by uh, Fiji Water. Thank you, Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, that, it, wouldn't that be tight? I thought that it was would be That sounds clean. I know. Fiji Water. My biggest. That'd be legit. One of the biggest things would be pay per view. And uh, that's just because of COVID. Remember when I hit you guys up? And yeah. I was like, I'm going to have this race. That's just because <laughs> COVID, because no one coming to the track. That was a big come up. I would definitely say one of the best things I ever did was do the merch myself. Um, you know, I started my merch in my bedroom and there was so many opportunities along the way to give it up, but I'm glad that I kept that in house, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing. That's out of house, yeah. but there's a lot of people who sub it out, but I just love that part of the business. I love the management side of it and just seeing it function. So that's been something that I enjoyed keeping around. Does that play back into kind of what you, the path you thought you would have taken if YouTube wasn't an option? Uh, like business owner? Because obviously your dad's a business yeah, owner. Yeah, I mean, manager. I think I would have been an entrepreneur regardless, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I think probably the number one factor 
is just not burning bridges and building a lot of strong relationships with uh, people and, and just not ever really worrying about financially uh, having like super tight financial relationships with my friends, you know, like, yeah, that's I a just, tough one. There's some guys who are so freaking tight about it. And I'm just like, man, if I can do this and enjoy it with this many people, that's a win. And then it's like everything just kind of kept scaling up and up and up. Also, I think paying my employees good has been uh, something that's really been helpful. Yeah, it keeps the loyalty yeah. high. Yeah, that's always – and it feels good, and they're happy. So I very guess important. kind of leads into another question that I wanted to ask you, uh, which you already talked about the good sides of it, but every time we come to your events, whether it's uh, Cletus and Cars or we just come to hang out or come to look at the track or whatever, your friends yeah. and family are always there in – has that ever become a negative factor? How does that work for you? Um, like like you're saying, friends that work for me, or yeah, and family, and family too. So my family has been amazing since my entire career. My parents, my brother, my sister, even my cousins have always. My grandparents have always been into the live event stuff a lot. Yeah, I remember that's that where really like on. it's most all hands on deck. You know, because. Yeah. And then my friends, you know, obviously some of my friends are employees. That, for some reason, a lot of people are like, never hire your friends. I don't know. It's always worked really good for me. I've never hired a friend. I've never hired a friend and just had, like, the normal drama that everyone talks about. So, and then you get into, uh, like, what you can do to make the experience better having your friends do something with you is better like when i was in college i did homework for this guy who was uh like i did his homework for him and he paid me really wealthy guy uh well his really wealthy family and he had a lot of money so like whenever we'd go out to dinner we we're all like man i hope he pays you know <laughs> right right we'd all be like dude i hope he pays you know like, this, <laughs> it's like when we go to dinner like, with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can relate yeah, yeah right you guys are you guys are like I feel like you guys always pay for stuff when we're with you. So you, you guys just the up. appreciation. Baking man. it till we so, make it. <laughs> so like when I uh I always said that whenever I made it to a point where I was financially capable, like I would one thousand percent make sure my friends get to go with me. So like today, we got all the boys here outside Wild. the room. Yeah. And they're they're you know they don't have to pay for anything, but you know, maybe they'll buy their own food and stuff. Like I just try and make it so that it's zero financial burden on them and it makes the experience so much better. And you know, George is here. He works for me, but the rest of them don't work for me. They're yeah. just here to have fun. Just and, good boys. And they also boys. have burnout cars too that we build and maintain because it's just so much better when you're there with your friends. That Miata, dude. That Miata yeah. has, I think, it's probably the most fun thing. She's it's been told four times. <laughs> the yeah. best. The best. And, yeah. And so, like, they all brought their own machines. Which they 100% pay for that. Garz has got his KX85, you know. <laughs> Fits them good, dude. We're going to see some action. <laughs> we put a paddle tire on that sucker. He already aerated our lawn a couple yeah. times. <laughs> going to be nuts. Just full poles on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's just made me happier in general happiness has helped us succeed because i enjoy the heck out of this how could i how could we not and uh sometimes when like a motor blows and it's just like the work like we're all like way down on ourselves we're like damn we've screwed up like we just had an engine honestly get screwed up last week totally our fault caused a huge huge bunch of problems and we're all like freaking pissed i'm pissed and then i'm sitting there thinking while we're all brainstorming i'm like guys we should just like chill out it's not like we just lost a patient on the operating table in front of us. Yeah. Right? Like our performance engine broke. Like, oh no. Oh, <laughs> not no, that right. big of a deal. Like, <laughs> what a problem. Yeah. This is, we're so lucky that the, it could be so much worse. So, yeah, I don't know. Just keeping that positive attitude and having the right guys around you, that's been all my success. Uh, oh, one last thing a mentor, Alan Sherevitz, my boy. That's that's been huge for me. I mean, my dad too, and and just being able to call and bounce ideas off yeah. older guys who have done business for a long mm -hmm. time, that's been a major key to success. Yeah, that's excellent. What was the transition like when Alan went from a track owner to your manager? 
Yeah, so Alan owned the drag strip for like 17 years or something like that. And when Victor bought it from Alan, Alan called me and he's like, you know, Alan owned a lot of like patents and stuff. Oh, I didn't Medical know that. Medical patents. Like, oh, because okay. with the, oh, because he worked with Travis. Somewhere. That's right. Yeah. It, it's a lot. But he, uh, he's kind of retired at the point where when he was selling the track and he called me, he's like, hey, I, uh, you know, I'm selling the track. I don't have a lot of plans and I'd love to help you out in any way possible. And he had already been helping me with live events on the road. Right. And so, like, just naturally, he, became my business manager we didn't even know what to call it because like he would always join the meetings like when we call mountain dew or whatever like he'd just be on the call and they're like oh okay alan and what's your part and we're just like one day just blurted out business manager and now it just <laughs> stuck yeah it's not like i it's not like he has a salary okay interesting like, I, like, I figured it was yeah i think that a lot of people probably do think that but he gets uh he does get paid for like off percentages of things, which, you know, but it accounts to nothing compared to what he's done for, for my business. Yeah, that's yeah. a good guy. I think when I first met Alan, you the said it was your business guy. manager. I'm thinking, what does this guy actually do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he does like the weirdest stuff. <laughs> like I'll, yeah. I just call him when I do anything. Like I'll call him like if I'm if I'm going to buy that Supra, I'll like bounce it off him, you know. Just have, it, that's, that's been awesome crazy it's helpful good thing to have, though, yeah. yeah i hope that one day i can be that mentor to a younger guy can we t quickly just maybe briefly talk about the super hate to now the super love <laughs> i feel oh, like yeah. as what? soon as i talk about talk driving about, the supra talk about the elephant in the room yeah i'm Dude, the biggest okay we're talking about loser in the world and then you get a supra and all of a sudden it's the best Supras thing the channel's cool ever now, seen guess, right? well, let's talk about your supra and how you approached the situation. <laughs> oh, I remember that. <laughs> when, I mean, when, when I saw you at World you Cup. You said, I bought a Supra. No, I didn't. And I'm going to, you said, I got a Supra. Okay, maybe, whatever. Okay, which in my eyes sounds like, or my ears says, I bought one. You said, I got a Supra and I'm going to take down Mullet. Was that not his exact words? It's probably accurate. That sounds Pretty right. Yeah. And I That's... literally was like, there's just zero chance. Like, <laughs> and you were like, you wouldn't. You wouldn't show me any videos, any pictures, and you just, yes, it will. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> like you sound like a kid who's like, my uncle Supra would crush your El Camino. I'm like, okay, like, I think I qualified I, higher than you in World Cup. Just saying. Anyway, I won World Cup. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, I went yeah, down in a 200 mile an hour is, bath, dude. Like, I you won. had it easy. You probably I had won. AC in that thing. Man, Leo, he, he got you on that exchange. He did that win was, World Cup. <laughs> shit. As soon as I got that 200 mile an hour bath, dude, I was out of it at that point. There was no was no good, more thinking. Dude. Yeah, we well, tried to I fix mean, the car, but tried didn't didn't happen. Dude, two JZs just aren't as tough as everyone says. I don't know, but it's mine blew like up in 24 hours, dude. <laughs> how how quick did that SMX blow up? Think about that. The SMX never has blown up. It know. knocked the thrust bearing out. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I don't even mean. know what that is, dude. Too complicated. It's not like you were two-stepping the Supra a lot or anything. <laughs> yeah, what the like, hell's no a two-step going to do it to it, dude? <laughs> oh, no problem. Yeah, you're right. But do you love that car? What do you think? I do like it. Are you getting hate at all from the Supra community? Probably. <laughs> I thought, well, you said you read every comment, right? So are they commenting? Um, I mean, I don't read every comment on Facebook, but I know there's people okay. who are like, how dare you treat a Supra like that? I'm like, dude, I have the most clapped out Supra <laughs> you could have visually so who cares if i put a brush on it Still a mark IV super, super right. funny though sucker rips it yeah. is a great car i'm so excited to get it back with a built motor i mean the motor in it we knew was like kind of tired maybe i guess you could say because it didn't have a lot of oil pressure uh, barely need it so that was definitely disclosed to me because okay. the car would shut off mid pull Oof. And I'm like, what the hell's causing that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Safety show. Ah, safety. <laughs> yeah. Adds up. You're done. <laughs> adds up. Turn that off. Eight PSI. And then it and then it killed the head gasket. So, you know, just a combination of not being strong enough. Okay. What's the uh build looking like on the next motor? I think the new motor will be like whatever, fourteen hundred horsepower sufficient we'll run it out you know a little lower than that and then it should just be it's the induction like diamond pistons okay you know bad to the bone unit i think uh 
could be wrong, but I think Victor mentioned Crower is going to do the drivetrain or the valve train stuff. And fast forward, engine's going to put it all together. So, Hell yeah, dude. Nice. Crower nice. does some BA stuff with super I'm motors. Dude. Yeah. It could be cool. I like Supras. Oh, and you know what? I really want to put a sequential in it. I heard you say that. I think it yeah. was in Cooper's podcast, and I just don't agree with it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm torn I too. It sound. I I think that sounds cool. Yeah. I just want. Why like, don't you want it? All a little lever. <laughs> just never lift. Yeah. Just strain like, gauge, and then yeah, people want to feel that boost know, drop between. Though. Like it's just part of the super life. You got to yeah. keep that turbo wound up in those things. That's tough. It's a big turb. Yeah. It is kind of fun shifting it, but you know. You know what we'll would be see. you know be even cooler if these two losers over here would get some cars that we could play around with. Do something. This, Tell them, please. This guy's the worst. Well, <laughs> I know that. I know that Seuss Magoose wants a car. You wanted you were after my Porsche Turbo for a while. Yeah, there. you remember when you uh wouldn't let me drive it? And yeah. You got rid of it for an affordable price. And then now you can't touch tough. them for under like I <laughs> called you. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I called you. I don't know that you called me. When I, I had the black Porsche, I, I definitely to told someone. Literally about. wrestle you to the ground for like fifteen yeah, minutes. And uh, then I still didn't get to drive it. Yeah, because I beat you. Yeah, but it, I mean, you could have just let it's me. True. <laughs> <laughs> he tried hard. He tried hard. You know? Dude, are we, are we having I, a wrestling now match? I don't mind letting you drive my car. At that time point in time, that car was I was all in on that. Oh, puppy, dude, that dude. car was right, right. I had just purchased that so he, how many cars yeah. do you have that no one knows about? Zero. I don't have a single car. I mean, did anyone know about that that other Turbo S? I thought that was like a... I mentioned the fact that I had it when I bought the white one, but I don't think I have a single hidden vehicle at the moment. Because there was some chilling in your garage that I opened the door to go do the laundry, and I'm like, what am I looking at here? But maybe that was just was it the here. What was it? The, the second gen Camaro? The, uh, no, I sold that to Justin Keith, and Volvo, I showed them that Volvo burnout car, the Fear Monster. Yeah, uh, I showed it briefly, sold it. Okay. Right now, I own zero secret vehicles. Out of all wow. the cars that you've ever had, every car, Raptor R. For real? What's the worst 100%. one? Yeah, percent. Yeah. Out of everything you, my ever Raptor had. R is the best vehicle I've ever owned. Almost sure of that. I believe it. Yeah, I'm. I know it's hard to believe. If you ask me if I'd rather have my Turbo S or my Raptor no. R, I'd take the Garrett, Raptor R. Please, Shut dude. Up. <laughs> dude, I, I know. It. I love it. I it's love it. actually that good. It's nuts, huh? It is actually that good. It's the most versatile ripper I've ever had. Yeah. Can we get Nick yeah. Sousa Raptor R, please? Do something. Pull a string. He ordered a Gen 3 in November 2021. 21. Here's Still has Here's the deal, him. dude. I could maybe work something. Come on now. I could try. I need a heated steering wheel bad. I know. Yes. You don't Are you prepared the, you to pay do. the bill? You don't. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't I could know probably about, get uh, you one and I could probably get you a slightly used one. Is it white and one, it's in Florida? 130. You got this, dude. You got this. That's freaking I am telling you, you should come drive mine. I'll let next you drive we, mine. I beat the heck out of mine. There. It's actually so good. A Ford F 150. It's silent, dude. It doesn't make, like, you hit a bump, it doesn't make a creak. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I don't know what they did. That thing is freaking <laughs> incredible. And, like, we were just driving to the airport, and we were, like, racing. We raced some kid and just destroyed just his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rips. I mean, it's only a 12-second truck. Like, it only runs, like, low 12s, which isn't stupid fast, but it's it's just enough to... And it can fully drift. It can link the Freedom Factory. Yeah, that's nuts. And then that drive to nuts, yeah. wherever, towing a trailer. That's something... Man, I would... Uh, I mean, you just remind me. You gotta, like... You gotta let me drift at your track, dude, in one of your cars. I would let you drift. Like, I've yeah. wanted to do that since that day. We'll yeah, play. I need to fix Rocket so my friends can come drift again. That 240 I have. Yeah. Yeah. Is Donnie undriftable great. for us? Yeah, it's not really a car I can let people drive because it doesn't have a rev limiter, really. So oh, okay. if you take it to, it has a limiter, but if you take it there, it's gonna have a bad time. I mean, there, you're. You're leaning she, on her if you take her up last, there. Yeah. And if you're not conscious enough to understand where the engine is at without looking, 
then you're going to end up there, you know. Yeah. Right, right. And the seat is on the floor and all the way back. So uh, I know. What I think <laughs> I'll get the 240 fixed. Yeah, you'd probably be fine. I'll get the 240 fixed. You guys can drift it. Like drift the raptor, man, I like that. Track. Oh, or the raptor, I guess. Because yeah, no, remember when you did too. the side by side out there and you drifted, dude, that was still. To oh me. yeah, you, you killed remember it. that. And then you yeah, had I remember the I was so stressed out that day. I I, I, I know. <laughs> Why are you so stressed out with us there? What do you think we're going to do? Well, that was when there was that dirt track. That dirt track. I was so stressed out that day because I had just got the dirt track, and here you guys are just being savages around (laughs) the entire facility. And it was early in my racetrack owner career. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. And then I think maybe two days later, I came out to the Freedom Factory just, you know, in the afternoon to get something. (laughs) And I hear... (laughs) <laughs> I go back there, dude. Alec and Chris from Prime are out riding on the track yeah. on dirt bikes. And I'm like, tracks closed permanently. That, that was enough for me. Middle of the day, like I'm I'm out here like busting my butt. Like, and I just hear this sound. I'm like, so there's no one else around to like save them if they're like laying on their head, you know. It's a good point. <laughs> sure. Right. But dude, the track that dirt track stressed me out too much. So that was a really good track, though, actually. It's now gone. Yeah, I know. We have a lot of Crown Vicks pack. Crown Vicks storage. There. What are you going to do with all those Crown Vicks, by the way? Well, we part them out, and then the this guy comes and gets them. Oh, yeah. interesting. For a couple Perfect. hundred bucks, yeah. Okay, no. so not even scrap. Yeah, he scraps them. Oh, okay. But you're not scrapping them. No, nah, it's easier to have this guy come get them. Easy. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Man, wild. Yeah. Phew. We're probably sitting at like 150 of them right now, maybe 130. Oh, what were okay. we back there for? The last time we were back there, the, the ripsaw. I thought it was back oh, there man. again after that, but yeah, that yeah. was cool to see how many of them were back there. It was like a relic of. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's my car from 2020 <laughs> yeah. and my car from 2021. Put so much work into the paint job, then it just sits know, out right? there. Yeah. Right. Remember when it was easier? To, it used to be easier to just buy freshies every race. Remember how yeah. I always used to buy freshies? Yeah. Yep. Those days are gone, brother. They ain't cheap no more. About thirty five hundred bucks. That's the ones you're spending per car. Pretty much, yeah. Is delivered. That delivered. Okay, that ain't too bad, I guess. Nah. I mean, well, is that a volume discount? I remember we used. To, yeah, not really. But I remember we used to go to the auctions and and uh, like me, Chad, and JH would be like bidding on them. We'd try and switch off so everyone knew it wasn't just us. And they get, they get like twelve hundred. We'd be like, nah, we're good. <laughs> we're like we're like a thousand max. Wow. And we get like twenty in one day. Yeah, not That's that simple badass. anymore. So what do you think? You know, are you going to make any changes to the future pay per view stuff that you're doing? I know you just got a full time guy. Yeah, I not don't so know. recently, but. I kind of want to. I kind of want to do some pay-per-views for some other people now that we have ours figured out because obviously, you know, it was like a lot to get ours figured out. I would love to uh, help some other people do it, and then I would definitely love to take ours to the next level. Like, I don't know what that is yet because the Crown Vic Racing does really good, but what is the next step? I'm not sure yet. You talked about doing Hellcats at one point. I... I would be down. You talked about doing Lambos at one point. I know. I know. Where does that stand? I'd... So the problem is when I looked into buying 20 uh, Gallardos. <laughs> <laughs> it was just saying it out loud. It was rough. <laughs> like, <laughs> most of them were convertible. Oof. Oh, yeah. That's tough. And horribly unreliable vehicles. Yeah. Like, there's no way a Lamborghini Gallardo could keep up with a crown fit. Yeah, I'm taking Which is it just for sure. a shame. Yeah. Now, is there a car in between a Gallardo and the Crown Vic that <laughs> would work? Yes. I just have to find what that is. I thought, dude, if I could get like, tw- we talked about like 20 C5s, but putting cages in C5 Corvettes is so hard. Super, Super tough. tough. Yeah. So then we like talked about chargers and we got a charger and the crown Vic beat it. So we're like, all right, well, seriously. Obviously. Yeah, dude. Whoa. Okay. Wouldn't have expected that. And so I don't know. It's just been, <laughs> it's, it's like a crown Vic's king, dude. <laughs> I don't know. It is huh. a pretty darn That's good pretty car. Crazy. I thought for sure the charger would be. Oh no, dude. That's so nuts. They suck. <laughs> yeah. Like we're talking just a police or a, yeah. it was a rental charger. Yeah. So but I was thinking I could get the interceptor ones for like six, seven grand each. 
Those caprices, well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe sweet, yeah. But those are probably harder to come by, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's that many of them. Most police company or the police people went to the explorers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the deal. More horsepower, more tires, more brakes, more. Right. It's, right. It's like we're in the sweet spot. If yeah. I get out of it, I don't know if there's any going back. Right. 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 Yeah, right. That would be a big problem. So outside of Crown Vic racing, what kind of stuff are you doing on a year to year basis? Like, what does it look like for you racing? Um, sprint boat racing is my newest thing. I love sprint boat racing. That looks wild. That is insane. That, that for real looks like you're in an F1 car. Like, yeah, just imagine you could go 80 miles an hour down the road and make a right angle turn. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. Just, just it, and it's going to do it. Like, you're like, your driveway's right here, and you're on 80, and you want to turn into your driveway, you just go, and it'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. How many Gs are you pulling, do you know? I don't know, dude. Some of those guys, I haven't looked at my data log, but some of those guys are saying, like, when you get to the very end, you do the, in the spin-out box, that some some people were saying, like, eight Gs to the side. Oh, wow. my gosh. If that, but that would be, like, a spike, right? Sure. Nothing's really sustained that's too high. Maybe two and a half three g's sustained sideways but nothing i don't think anything higher than that but i don't know the data yeah interesting so. that's a pretty wild deal any uh off-road racing in your future do you think yeah this weekend coming up i'm racing with travis pastrana at the utah uh nitro cross deal but outside of that i'm not an off-road racer i don't know bud I think you could do I'm it. Just, I think you could do it. I'm just bad at it. I really am bad at off-road. I have no I, idea how far we into this podcast, but I feel like I want to start I've talking seen, about your lap. Talk about the laps. Let's, do it. it's Let's time, get in the laps. I think. It Matt, how far right. are we in, bud? One minute. One hour, I would guess. One, One minute. hour? That's I think correct. it's probably time to talk Let's about this it. line, dude. Let's get into it. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, it's a little so, bit clunky on the first one here, but I got to pull out my laptop. And oh, I, I, there's, there's you no looked screen. Up like there's a screen. Yeah. I kept looking. I know there's no screen. <laughs> we don't have the screen. Go, this flips over. <laughs> Eventually over there. But TV, yeah. Event fan. Yeah. We'll while, while I set this up, maybe, uh, Doug, you kind of talk about everything since this is the first time introducing to the people what we're doing here. Oh, yeah. That's right. So. You know, we've got this new track. We've been teasing this for a while. Working on this track for months at this oh, point. Yeah, since hundreds of dump trucks coming in. And what are you uh, paying a load for dirt right now? Zero dollars. Oh, the best part, yeah. So the city. What a fantastic deal. <laughs> yeah, city's redoing a bunch of roads and sewers, and we got hooked up with them. And all the clay and sand they're pulling out, they're trucking over here <clears> for free. Killer that's an deal. incredible deal. Can't beat it with a stick. I think that's dude. the cheapest dirt I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now we got this badass track. We got these badass friends. We got this idea to have our friends drive on this track in the same machine and see how they rank. Right? You guys have seen this Pretty before. Yeah. If you're Top Gun fan or Top Gear fans, yep. you've seen this kind of action. So, Garrett, you ran uh, your laps earlier today. So we gave you a 10 minute practice session. And then three flying laps. I think they look pretty good. Leo's pulling it up and right now. What's that machine called? It's a CF Moto Z Force 950. Okay, yeah. Pretty solid unit. Perfect <laughs> amount of horsepower for that deal. Yeah. Right. We didn't want anything too crazy. But what's good about it is you have to be a good driver <laughs> to go fast. You can't just use a bunch of throttle. Yeah. You got to hit the line. It's got a really short wheelbase. You got to so be kind of wants to right. understeer. So yeah. you got to get into it a little bit. Right. All right, boys, we'll have the lap loaded up here. I think uh, we'll watch it, and then I'll superimpose this uh, in the actual pod. video, in the pod, so you guys can see that. We haven't quite figured out that technology yet. just slap her on but the But I'll slap her right here, and we'll uh, we'll watch the lap. I got a little bit on board, right. too. You ready for it? Is this just my best lap? Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that pupper chooching. Rip, ripping, dude. All right, so you're coming That's in here. It's a big here. jump. Yeah. Is this lap two or lap three? Or lap this one? This was lap two. Okay. Really smooth through there. Look at just in oh, the yeah. Looking good. <laughs> just feeling it. Dude. Dogs are riding That's high. an off-road racer if I've ever seen one. That might be the only angle I've seen you in something where you don't look giant. <laughs> I fit good in that machine. You did yeah. really well in that corner. Can we name this corner the hot dog? The Cle hot dog? Cleaver's corner. Yeah. It's a hot dog. That was excellent as well. Over the tabletop, into the final berm here. 
I think you pretty much nailed the lines. Yeah, you were on, really on good. point with the lines. That one was Huge a- jump there, too. <laughs> Oh, so now okay. it's going to repeat. Good technology. <laughs> okay. Okay. How did you feel about the lap time and about the car and all that stuff? Um, that particular lap was not bad. I think that um, coming into the hot dog turn that I was just referring to where I almost flipped, yep. yeah. which I really hope you guys call it the hot dog turn from here forward. I guess we don't have a choice now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's done. I think well, it's done. Remember on uh, Top Gear when they always refer to that one yeah. corner, like coming through Gambon. Yeah, Gambon yeah. or something. Yeah. Well, when I got in the hot dog on the second one, <laughs> before the hot dog, the jump before the hot dog, I was pushing. Yeah. And so I had to lift and then get back on and then yeah. get into that turn. But other than that, it wasn't too bad. Okay. I think you did a great job. And then, real, I mean, realistically, okay, you have the fastest lap right now. You're I don't really lie, there's no other line, line. You're <laughs> going to be on top <laughs> until the next podcast. You're going to be on top. And what's going to happen here is we're all going to hear this number, and we're all going to go out and try to beat it, I guarantee, in our off time, of course. Yeah. yeah. As as well, J.H. is going. already laying down some laps. I know what's fast is. Do you? He well, looked fast out there. He's, okay. on, he's a good racer. So, so just so everyone so, knows, I, I do a frame-by-frame frame on the video, and I actually go down to the thousandth of a second. So okay. I have a very accurate start and stop position. It's the exact same position. And we do have a lap time. And right. Matt has got a camera that shows our lap time board that he's going to fire up right now. And then yeah. down below, we have our... You got it? Yeah, it's right over there. The we magnet got, and the marker? We got the magnet. We got the marker. Oh. So Doug's going to write Cletus and this yep. number and then slap <laughs> it up on the board. This is a big moment. This is a big moment. I got to do a good job here. Do a good job. Do you know how to spell it? Two E's. <laughs> oh, do I go all capital? No, I think you... Oh, maybe not. Okay, right, say the that number, was okay. bro. That was okay. What do we got? I think we got to go up to the board. You want to see it written on and the written, board? Yeah, Matt's okay. got the, the... He's got a tertiary video camera here. <laughs> all right, I got you. <laughs> Live. Yeah, I'll give you a clap for an audio sync. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all synced in. Oh, nice. we're good. All right, Cletus. Number one, dude. Let's go. You ran our track. What are we calling the track, by the way? The Butter Dome, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was chosen. We yeah, we put a vote out on YouTube. Anyway, you're the, too jacked on the this bu- laptop. <laughs> the Butter Dome. You ran it in forty. Come on, dude. Two. Point seven five nine, dude. All right. Hell yeah, brother. So you beat JH. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because JH yeah. dropped forty threes. <laughs> now you told me that a forty six was fast. So what the hell happened? <laughs> when we were out there running before the last tabletop, I think our best lap was a forty four. Yeah. So uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the hell happened out there, but I feel like you got a you got, got a pretty dude, good you ability. <sighs> Brother, this is bald eagles bat my back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Cool. Excellent. That's, That's badass. All right. Well, I hope I hope it stands. Now you guys got me fired up. Hopefully the next person doesn't come in and just go like a 41-9 or something. Yeah, I don't know. We got Ronnie Renner coming in next. <laughs> 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 Crap, dude. That's a, I, that's a tough number, though. That's a that's tough no number. gimme. That's no gimme. Yeah. yeah I if think anyone's going to beat it, it's definitely going to be Ryan. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's light. He has a CF moto. Yeah, he's Mr. He CF moto. He does this for a living. Yeah. Bit of an advantage. Damn it, there. dude. Bit yeah. of an advantage. All right, and well. then after that, we got Andrew Carlson lined up. Yeah, also. Okay, Pro so 4, yeah. Pro 2, nice. Razor factory sponsored <laughs> driver. Go ahead and slide hitters. my number down. <laughs> I want to text when I when Ronnie's number comes out. Okay, fair enough. We can do that. I yep. feel like 42759 is incredible yeah, for what awesome. you've done. Good, thanks. Yeah, you did a good job. Good. That was super fun. It was fun to watch, too. It was fun. Yeah. And then JH and I did some side-by-side racing in them. Like, That's the best, right? That was really mm-hmm. fun. Except for mm-hmm. getting roosted. I hate that. Yeah. But and, I'm not an off-road racer. We yeah, did talk dirt. about doing something though off road, ERX and Crown Vix. I texted you about that. Here's the deal: Have you ever seen the one off road race we did in Crown Vix? No. The one behind? Yeah, we killed about. We did start the race with eleven cars, one finished. Mm, not the off-road radiators either. just get cleaned right off of them mm, from the jumping. Yes, yeah, any small bump. Really, okay. they're terrible off road. Dang it. Yeah. What if there was no jumps? It's just big rollers. Well, then it'd be lame. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, a lot more turns though. Right-handers as well. 
Yeah. Maybe we can work it out. We'll figure something out. Might be something there. Rangers. Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, I think that's it for this podcast, man. What did you think about it? How'd you feel? It was fun. Uh, I think you guys did a really good job. I think Thank you. Got, I think this could be good. Yeah, I'm awesome. still super nervous. My heart rate's elevated big time. But I uh, thank you for coming, man. Thank Anytime, you for being our guys. friend. Thanks for being my friends and and uh, having us, hosting us this week. We're going to have a lot of fun. Dude, yeah. It's just getting started. I've been hearing exhaust notes. <laughs> yeah, especially I know. Fired up to go hang with the boys. Yeah. I'm afraid to go out and look in the shop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After we've They're going to be working on someone's X3. Who knows sure. what happened out there? Yeah, we swapped everything to paddles. I told GH, listen, you're going to absolutely wreck your car if you go on that track. In paddles? Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> at all. Oh, you, okay. You, just, you go too hard. Ah, yeah. 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 See awesome. That. Thank right. you. Yeah, Thank you for coming for on. It off. Thanks, fellas. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate you. Listen, this has been Side by Side with Cleus McFarland, baby. Nick Seuss, congratulations for being a father. I love you, buddy. Thanks, man. Love you, too. Appreciate it. Nice being here. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> we're there. Yeah. We're well there. done. Well done. Well done. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> oh. All right. See you later. See ya.